Greetings, friend. You will never believe how to solve this Sudoku. Not only will I give you the tips, tricks, and strategies that do solve this Sudoku, I'll also reveal some fun facts about my Friday featured setter for May, Pietata. Click below if you want to give it a go. With that, it's solving time. First thing you want to do when a setter gives you a bunch of givens in a particular house, you want to fill those out. That is a little bit of what they call telegraphing. Pietato is saying this has something to do with solving the puzzle. So you notice there's a lot of givens here in block one. Also across row two, we're missing a one, two, nine. So this is a two, nine. This is a one, two, nine. And then come down here in column two, and it looks like we're missing a one, two, eight. So that's a two, eight. And this is a one, two, eight. And then you want to go over here and notice there's only a one, two here in block nine. Okay, so there's a lot of ones, a lot of twos. This, I think, will have something to do with solving the puzzle. And this is what you should clue in on when you're first starting out. Now, if you kind of look around, uh, you're going to think, too, wing dart, because of the way it's uh, shaped here, kind of looks like a, a dart with the arrow and the wings, that there might be some kind of wing strategy involved, an X-wing, XY wing, XYZ wing, W wing, WXYZ wing. Let's see what we can use in this puzzle. So other things you want to look at, let's look here for the one. You got this one coming up and you got this one cutting across here. What's important, uh, either way, you can either, you can either come up here to block two or go over here to block four. What you'll notice is that the ones are a pointing pair. If they're a pointing pair, that means they have to be somewhere here in block four, uh, but they're, you know, they're limited to the same column. So that's the case, it can't be anywhere else along the column. So we can get rid of that one right there. So that's important, you do wanna get rid of that one. And then also you'll see that the way these eights come down, that the eights are limited to these two cells here in block four and so that makes them a pointing pair so eight can't be anywhere else along here uh, this is some stuff you want to see in in case you're not familiar these ones and these eights this is called snyder notation anytime in a three by three block you only have two possibilities or can you want to mark those it leads you to see some more advanced strategies but you are not going to be able to solve anything right away you're not going to be able to solve any hidden naked singles in the, this puzzle and you can test it out start doing some snyder you're going to find out you're going to need at least one advanced strategy to make this work all right other thing i want to point is with the nines uh you got this nine cutting across row one so it leaves the nines in two spots so this is a pointing pair of nines all right so you do that um something else to keep in mind if you notice the length of this puzzle, Logic Masters Germany. So Pia Tata put it on Logic Masters and you're not that familiar. Logic Masters, it's like worldwide. You think you have a great puzzle uh, and you're proud of it. You put it on Logic Masters Germany and people will solve it. This one has an 89% approval rating, which is awesome. That means people really, really like this puzzle. You'll get pretty intense scrutiny here. And so, you know, I'm giving you a quality puzzle if it's on Logic Masters Germany. And so then another thing you want to see here, and this is kind of cool. You know, so it's a five, seven, nine right here in block one and it's limited row columns two and three look down here five seven nine are also limited columns two and three here in block four so that means a five seven nine have to be in the same three cells down here in block seven because they can't be anywhere else in column they can't be in columns two or three there's three of them they have to be in these this is a naked actually a hidden triple the way you want to look at it for five seven nine Pretty, pretty dang cool. And so we're going to mark that and get rid of that, get rid of that, and get rid of that. And you're going to say, okay, that's kind of cool. You know, I, I think we made some progress here. Uh, we will need this later, but it's not going to do anything for you immediately. What it does let you know is that the rest of these cells, these four cells that are remaining, they're a naked quad. Now that's a way of looking at it. So one, two, three, four, naked quad. And we can trim this up a bit. We can put the two there. We can get rid of the one right there, and that ends up being a one, two, three, four. So that's a little helpful there. But after you do that, again, strategies in the cell, it's going to dry up. You could do, and I could put some more scenario notation here, but I'm not going to do that uh, because I want you to know that once you test a puzzle and you're not getting and finding any solves judicial, you have to look for advanced strategy. And what I recommend is you look for single candidate strategies first. So let's look at single candidate strategies. Put a one right here you're not really getting any 
uh, eliminations with the ones. And so that's not going to help us out. Let's check out the twos. Let's see if there's anything going on with the twos. Because we know there's a lot of ones and twos going on here. All right. So twos are those two spots here. And I'm basically just marking all the spots where two could be in each of these blocks. Okay. And since we have this hidden triple, twos can't be there. And you got two spots here for a two right there. All right, let's get rid of this so it doesn't complicate things. Put this in blue. And now we're going to look and see if there's any kind of advanced strategies. We do have only two spots for two here. I'm going to mark that. Uh, that will come in a little bit handy a little bit later. But this is the focus point you want to see right here. You focus on this. We're got, we have an advanced strategy that we can use to solve a cell right now. Do you see it? Okay, I'll point it out to you. You want to focus here on this block. Okay, you have two candidates. And... One of those candidates goes straight out the column and only has one other of that candidate. And the other one goes straight out the row and only has one other of the candidate. This is called a two-string kite. All right, let me give you a little coloring here to kind of show you what I'm talking about. And this is great stuff. I love how Pietato put this in here. So two-string kite. What it means is either this purple cell's a two, right? If it's not a two, this would have to be a two. This won't be a two, and this cell would be a two. So either a two's here or a two's there. And since a two has to be one of those spots, we can eliminate a two from this cell right there. This is beautiful stuff, all right? Because now we can actually make a solve. And I love how I put it in here. If you're just not that familiar with how two-string kites work, I did make a tutorial, two-string kites. I'll put a link to it here. You can go check that out. And while you're at it, subscribe to Smart Hobbies, and you will solve advanced strategies like two-string guides even better. All right, let's, so we're going to be able to solve that, but let's remove some of these colors here first. Actually, get rid of all the colors and kind of clean this up. And before I get into this, one thing, other thing I do want to point out is these five cells right here. And this is very important and something I kind of noticed. I'll highlight them, and let's just go with purple. You see how there's mostly, there's a 1 and 2 in all of them, but there's an 8 here and there's a 9 there. These are our focus cells. If we can eliminate something from one of these cells, we're going to be able to do another advanced strategy that's going to be very cool. But what I can tell you is that you have to have an 8 here or a 9 there at the minimum. You have to. You cannot eliminate the 8 and the 9 from these cells, making a 1, 2. Otherwise, you have this thing called a bi-value autogon. And whenever you have 5 of the same by value candidates and they're in a loop like this that's an autogon and it it screws up the puzzle and I'll, I'll show you that really really quick if we get rid of this nine here if you got rid of this eight here you know no matter what this cell is this is a one that's a two that's a one that's a two what could you put right there you can't put a one or a two right there right because you have a one here and a two there so that breaks the puzzle that's why i'm saying you gotta have an eight or a nine in one of those spots. So if we can eliminate one of those, then we're going to be able to make a nice, really, really cool solve here because we know the other candidate will have to be true. All right, I did want to point that out. Let's get rid of this. And you're like, okay, I don't, I don't know why you showed me the autogon thing. And if you just, if you don't remember, I did do an autogon tutorial. I'll put that at the end. You do want to check that out because it's related to the next advanced strategy that we're going to do. And it's very cool when you see these things. It can help you solve Sudoku even better, especially the more advanced puzzles. All right, so we can actually solve a three here, and this is good stuff for us. And you're like, okay, what's the confetti about? Um, that is something new they put in Sudoku Pad, and that's three in the corner. So it's the REM reference. Um, Simon Anthony likes to kind of mention that. And so whenever you have three solved in the corner, it'll give you the little confetti. Beautiful stuff. Okay, we can get rid of these threes here now. And that gives you a one, two, four naked triple as well. I'll kind of highlight that. And our purple to tell you that these cells can't be uh, one, two, or four anymore, right? Because they got to be in one of these three cells. So this can't be a two. We can actually solve that now for an eight. So we can solve that for an eight. This has got to be your three. So I'll get rid of the colors for the naked triple. And we're going to make some progress, but we're not going to quite finish the puzzle just yet. So don't get, don't get too excited here. But what we did, though, with this eight is now the thing I just told you about. We removed... The eight so now we have a one two there and this leads ourselves to the next advanced strategy 
And it's the kind of thing, too. I said, if you remove one of these cancers, we're going to be able to make a solve here. And we are. But I want to show you in the advanced strategy that you'd probably see and you probably come across a little more often. And this is what Pia Title wants you to see with this puzzle. This is a great strategy here. And so it involves these four cells right here. All right. And it's called a remote pair. You notice how they're all one and two. So whenever you have an even number chain of the same by value cells and they can make an elimination, that's a called a remote pair. So you have four of these candidates of so the one and the two. All right. And let's show this. I'm going to do a little coloring here. We're going to do a little blue. We're going to do a little orange here. All right. And so we don't know if this is a one or two yet, but what we do know is that, you know, it has to be one of those. So if this orange represents one of those numbers, then this blue has to be the opposite. If this is a one, that has to be a two. And as a two, this would have to be the one, right? So we know the orange cells would be the same, can it? And so then the blue cells have to be the same, can it? Then this and this would be opposites. What we know then is that this is one of the candidates, and this is the other. Any cell that sees, you can remove both. And that's the power of a remote pair. The pretty easiest spot because it's all the same by value can. It has to be an even amount. So we had four in our chain, and that's the minimum number, and that works. And then you can eliminate both cans. We can eliminate a one and a two from right here. And like I said, we were, we knew we could solve that for a nine. And I just showed you with the remote pair how we can solve that for a nine. Cool. This is awesome stuff. And before I move on with solving the puzzle, I do want to share my fun fact about Pietato. And so with Pietato, I asked, how did you come up with your puzzle names? And his answer is that he comes up with the names normally after what the puzzle looks like. So I have a couple of other puzzles that I've solved. Like I remember Bat and I remember Fennec, which is like a type of fox. Those starting grids look like, you know, a bat and they look like a fox. And in this one, Wing Dart, the starting grid kind of looked like a dart with the arrow here and the wings coming out this way. It had nothing to do with wing strategies. Some other setters will put winged in the name because they're trying to hint you to a wing strategy. I thought that was really cool. I wanted to point that out. And I love revealing these kind of facts about my Friday featured setters. And so let's remove some of these colors here as we get back to our solving. And I also want to point out too, I'm going to have a fifth exclusive Pietato puzzle on my Buy Me A Coffee page. You want to get that puzzle and also great exclusive Reward puzzle packs. I just released one by Skidix this month. Click on the pin comment below to join the Smarty Party. All right. What we can do here is solve that for a nine. And now we know this is a two and that's a nine. And because this is a two, that can't be a two anymore. We can solve this cell for a two. So I made those marks to solve that for a two. Here's your one. Here's your two. Now we actually know this is the one of the remote pair. That would be the two. This is a one and that's a two. So now you can see things are starting to... Uh, shape up for us, but we're not done. So you gotta gotta keep paying attention, and you want to check out that great Audagon puzzle at the end because we got some more great solving here as well. So we solved row two, we solved column two, we solved blocks one, and we solved block nine. We got this two right here. This is going to help us now since it can't be a two anymore. That's a four. That's a one, and that's a two. Outstanding. Now you're going. Okay, what can we do here? All right, so look at these nines. You got these nines, so this has to be a nine. And now let's look across row five. You always want to see where do I have more restrictions. We have three cells remaining. We need, it looks like a five, six, and a seven. Well, I got a, a seven right here. I got a five looking at it, and I also have a seven right here. So this is like kind of like my favorite strategy to kind of point out. Uh, whenever you see this, we have two of the three missing candidates pointing to one cell, and then one of them is repeated. Look at another. You can solve all three, because then we know this has to be your six, this has to be the five, and then that would be the seven. I love that little neat naked triple trick, and I always want to keep showing that. All right, we got these two sixes right here. You got these two sixes. There's only one place left for a six. Another thing, whenever you have four of a candidate pointing into a block, you know you can solve it. There's only going to be one remaining. Okay, let's go up here. Uh, I don't think we finished all the twos. You got these twos. You got these twos. So we can actually solve for two up here. And then you might notice this would be a one seven and an eight can't solve that yet but what it leaves is a four and a six we have a four here so you know this is your six and that's your four so we kind of clean that up and then what you're missing down here 
is a one, three, and a seven. Well, I got two sevens now, and I got a three. Again, a ne another neat naked triple trip. We can solve all three of those. Because of the three and the seven in column nine, that's a one. Because of the seven in column eight, that's a three. And this is going to be your seven. Now we have what's called a full house. There's only one can remaining. So we can always solve that. When you ever have a full house, you know with certainty that has to be a six. Okay. After solving that, let's look here. It looks like we need a one and an eight. I got my one right there. So here's your one and here's your eight. Uh, it looks like we need a three and a four. Can't solve the three and a four. And what I'm doing, I'm looking over here in my peripheral to see if there's any threes or fours that play into this. And there are not at this time. So we got to go look somewhere else. Let's look across here. We got a one, two, six, one, two, three, six, seven. So we need a four, five, eight, nine. Well, I'm seeing right here, look at this, four, five, and nine means this is a naked single eight. It has to be an eight. All right, and then right here, we got a five and a nine, so this has to be a four. Awesome. And so we were able to solve that. And so what does this mean? This is a five, nine. That looks like it's a five, nine. We can't solve it yet. We will get back to it. Uh, we need, it looks like a one and an eight here. I got my eight. So here's your eight and here's your one. Awesome. And now with this one, across this one coming down there's only one place left for a one right here we can come up here and solve this for a one and what are you missing the seven eight i got my seven so that's really those sevens have been helping us out clean up the rest of this puzzle we're not done keep watching because we can't uh let up just yet we want to make sure we solve the rest of the puzzle so we're looking for looks like a three and a seven here i got my seven so that's your three that's your seven and now we can take care of this naked triple that's been holding out on us nine five seven you remember i said there was a five nine across here so as soon as you saw the five you can solve for the nine right away we now we have a full house across here and in row nine what's that going to be it's going to be a five do we have a five i'm going to look up do we have a five here in block five? no we don't so we know that has to be your five and now we just create another full house so we can solve this for the four another full house in block eight it means this can be a three okay we need these two cells and we need these two cells. I remember we needed a three and a four. We solved this three. That's a three and that's a four. We don't see a four here in block five. So that has to be your four. And the last digit is an eight. You need to check out this other puzzle to understand that Otagon thing I was talking about. Thank you so much, Pia Tuttle, for being my Friday featured setter. I can't wait to show more of your puzzles. And thank you so much for watching.